In this work, we design and implement a system to detect sign language in real time. I'm first going to start with a brief overview of sign language. Sign language is basically a mode of communication primarily used by the hearing impaired community, which involves mostly hand gestures. You can see an example of the English alphabet signed according to the standards of American Sign Language on the right. So when a person who is knowledgeable about sign language tries to communicate with someone who does not know sign language, generally there needs to be some sort of an interpreter in between. If we do have a system which can detect sign language, we can bypass this interpreter. That's pretty much the motivation of our work. There are two primary methods of sign language recognition. One is data glove based approach, where a glove with a bunch of sensors is used to collect some data. The problem with this approach is that the gloves that are found commercially are expensive and not all sensors that are needed to detect a particular language are present in those gloves. The second primary method of sign language recognition is image processing based, where a huge amount of image is collected and then some sort of machine learning models are used to detect a particular sign. The main problem with this approach is that the performance can depend on ambient light and it also prevents free movement on part of the user. The user always needs to be present within the view of the camera. So these are our major contributions of the work. First of all, we design and construct a cost-effective data glove to recognize finger spelling in American Sign Language and Bengali Sign Language. So finger spelling is a very specific type of sign language where we spell out a word letter by letter to express that word. Second, we collect and make public a data set containing sensor values corresponding to different signs. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first work to make a data set public for sign language recognition using data gloves. And finally, we propose a system to detect sign language in real time, which can work even in resource constrained environment. So our whole methodology can be divided into three distinct steps. First of all, glove construction. Once the glove is constructed, we move on to data collection. And finally, once we have the data, we move on to the model training phase. And this is an iterative approach, meaning that sometimes depending on the result, we have to perform the three steps again to make necessary modifications. So I'm going to start with the glove construction phase. In this phase, we wanted to answer the question, what features we need to detect a particular set of sign language. As an example, if you look at the American Sign Language shown on the left, and this is also true for Bengali Sign Language, the primary distinctive feature seems to be bending. And we can detect bending using flex sensor. However, detecting bending is not sufficient. We also need some other information. For example, if we take a look at the pair U and V, we can see that their bending is pretty similar. However, their contact point differs. So we need to detect contact and to do that we used conductive fabric. We also need to detect orientation. For example, if we take a look at the pair H and U, we can see that their contact points and bending are pretty similar. However, the only thing that is different is their orientation. And finally, we also have some dynamic symbols which involve motion. And to detect motion, we need gyroscope. Once the data glove is constructed, we move on to data collection. Now, while collecting data, we wanted to capture the impact of different hand size. So we collected data from different individuals with different hand size. Moreover, even for a single user, when he or she puts off the glove and puts it on again, the sensors tend to position themselves a bit differently each time. So that's why we collected data in in different sessions for the same user. So once we have the data, we move on to model training. To train our model, we used careful cross-validation over 80-20 split of our data, 80% training, 20% testing. We 
perf in, we empirically evaluate the performance of a uh, few machine learning model, namely k nearest neighbor, random forest, artificial neural network, and support vector machine. So one thing to note here is that lazy learners are not really suitable for resource constrained environment. However, uh, machine learning models, uh, for example, artificial neural network, we can train those models in, let's say, a personal computer and just deploy the model in a microcontroller. And that, that's pretty much what we did. So there are a couple of questions which were not extensively studied before when it came to sign language recognition using data club. One of the questions was regarding sign language modeling, that is, given a stream of sensor values, how do we form intelligible messages? So in fingerspelling to express a letter, a user holds that letter for a certain amount of time and then moves on to the next sign. If the user introduces a longer pause, that just means a space. So this whole thing can be captured using a very simple thresholding method, and that's what we did. So this is how it works. Our processing unit collects data from our data glove at a certain sampling rate. Once it collects the data, it then tries to predict what character it is. However, as soon as it detects a character or letter, it does not really show it in the display. Rather, it waits to observe the same letter a certain number of time. And we say that this number is equal to a value minimum threshold. In this example, the minimum threshold value is set to two. So for example, at the first figure, we set our counter to one. We detect A, but we do not display anything. In the second figure, we've already seen two A's, so we set the counter to two. Now, as it is equal to minimum threshold, we now display A. Now, if we jump to figure number four here, we can see that we have seen four A's, and the display actually shows a space. That's because we've set the maximum threshold value to four. And if we fast forward to figure number six, we see that we've predicted C, and C is different for A, so we've we set the counter to one. However, we haven't really seen two C's yet, and as the minimum threshold value is set to two, we need to predict two C's consecutively for the C to be displayed in the display mode. In this case, we don't really see two C's, what happens is we now see a B. So the counter is reset to one again. And finally, we see another B. And this makes the counter two, which is equal to minimum threshold. And now we display B in our display unit. So one thing to notice here is that by using this simple mechanism, we were actually able to filter out the transitional noise of C. The second question that has not really been studied that extensively in previous works is the question of detecting dynamic symbols, that is, the symbols like Z and J, which involves movement with our fingers. So one simple way to do this is using finite state machines. Each of these motions can actually be mapped to different states, and we can just move along the finite state machine to detect whether a particular dynamic symbol was expressed or not. So this is what our final system looks like. We have a designed glove. Our processing unit collects data from our glove at a certain sampling rate. Once it has data, it forces this data to the classification unit. The classification unit predicts a letter and it forces it to the sign language modeling unit. And finally, this unit decides what to display in your display unit. So the processing unit can be a simple microcontroller. It can be our personal computer. Similarly, a display unit can be our personal computer. Uh, we can also display the letters in our smartphone using a Bluetooth module. So it, it can also be a simple LCD module. So we have a lot of options here. So the experimental methodology is pretty much uh, what we discussed in the data collection phase. And we've seen that uh, our system is able to achieve a pretty high accuracy of 96%, which is 
on the same level as the current state of the art. We observed that KNN and Randall Forest performed slightly better than ANM. However, as we wanted to deploy the system in resource constrained environment, we finally went with artificial neural network, a very simple one, with a single hidden layer uh, with uh, seven nodes in that hidden layer. So currently there are some non-standard gestures which can confuse the system. However, we've noticed that that happens most of the time when the gesture is not really intelligible in naked eye either. And from the confusion matrix for both ASL on the left and BDSL on the right, you can see that our performance is pretty good. So in conclusion, we built a system for real-time detection of finger spelling in ASL and BDSL. The system shows high accuracy even in presence of data variability. As uh, we've mentioned, we've collected data from different users with different hand sizes in different sessions. So the system is capable of running in resource constraint environment and we've used a pretty simple methodology where we train the model in our personal computer. However, we can deploy only the model in resource constraint environments like microcontrollers. And finally, we incorporated uh, sign language modeling and detection of dynamic symbols. These are two topics which have not really been discussed in previous works.